Now, look at that. Well, that's the end of that, I think. What on earth motivates behaviour like that? Whatever the cause, whatever their opinions, nothing justifies behaviour of that nature. So Olivier Martil very calmly asks the, the players to go back to their dressing room. What a shock it must be for referees, organisers, players and even the crowd because I'm in the commentary box and Joe, I'm shocked and I'm appalled. Yeah, absolutely, I am too. I mean, you know, we didn't actually see it because we're commentating on this table, the Allen and fan match. But um, I think somebody jumped out of the audience, threw chalk and dust all over himself and stomped all over the table. Well, the person who was trying to attack our table had got one word on the T-shirt I saw was stop. Thankfully, they were stopped, but not before they did an awful lot of damage. Let's go back to the studio. Yeah, well said to our commentary team there. It's, I have to say, one of the reasons I absolutely love snooker is the community that you have, the fans, we all love the sport and support the players. Jimmy, you don't often see something like that in snooker. No, we've seen a few streakers over the years, but uh, this was some sort of process or some protest, I don't know, but um, if that table's damaged, it's going to take a few hours to re-cloth re that, to get that table back um, to playing condition, so I don't know, it's going to mess up the whole schedule. Uh, shocking. And especially going back to the fact that Fan is a crucible debutant. I mean, the chances of this happening are, I mean, I can only think of a few occasions. Jimmy mentioned a couple of them there. Uh, what would now be the process? So does somebody need to assess the table before they decide if it needs to be reclothed, or is it just a, an immediate decision? Yeah, obviously, first of all, they'll have to assess what the... Is it a liquid? Is it dust? Mm. It, it, it's very difficult. We've had this sprung on, sprung on us, obviously. And uh, they'll, they'll have a five or ten minute assessment of what it is. If it requires a new bed cloth and new cushions and whatever, it, it will be at least a, a, a couple of hours. If, if, wow. It, it, you know, that would be the immediacy of it would be at least an hour and a half, two hours. Maybe they would have cushions that are, have been recovered, ready to go, so to speak. I, I think they actually might do but it'll be a couple of hours. I think what they'd have to do as well, they'd have to maybe um, put, uh, pull, the, uh, pull the dividing wall up and, yes. let, and let the crowd watch the other match on the other side and probably do that, fix that cloth, as Alan said, take a few hours, fix that maybe during the night and uh, just reschedule the game because, uh, you know, you've got fans the other side and this side who've paid all this good money for, to watch this match. And our very specific question of putting you on the spot, if you don't know the answer, more than understandable. What would happen to the frame score? You've interrupted a frame, do you forfeit the frame? Would you, I mean, it'd be a tough ask for the referee to now put all the balls back where they were, because that offend, effectively could affect the outcome of this match. 6-4 is very different to 7-3. Yeah, well, obviously technology now, I'm guessing that we'll be able to not superimpose, but we know where they were pretty much right. exactly. So the referees will be able to do that eventually. I was just thinking, and I'm only surmising, Thursday we have no morning session. So if we need another one, that could be a possibility. But that's, you know, this has been sprung on us. We, we obviously don't know. And just mentally, Jim, especially if you're a fan, I mean, Mark Allen's as hard as nails on the table, there's no question of that. Mm. But you're ready to play, you're focused, you're a professional sports person, you've played a couple of shots, and you're already back in your dressing room. He certainly, you can't get prepared for that, can right. you? You know, so it's just like, it's just unfortunate. It's a, sh a shocking situation, pointless. But, um, you know, I don't, you know, I, hopefully it doesn't affect Fan in future going forward. You know, I hope he can get that out of his mind for the game. Joe and Rob, they won't be too bothered. They've been around too long. But, um, yeah, I think the stop-start situation when you're ready to go and play a match and all of a sudden you've got to stop for a reason like that would be confusing for that young lad. A little update for you that what the um, officials have decided to do is they're going to try their best to clean up what's on the table, first would establish if indeed it is safe to play, clean up the best they can and they're looking to get play underway at 
quarter to the hour is the update we've got. Of course, it's a, it's a fluid thing. It will change. We can see there the table. Guys, I mean, what, what do we think is going on there, James? Are they just brushing the table? It, it, the, the problem is that w whatever that orange substance is, regardless of what it is, the table is now effectively unplayable, regardless of a vacuum cleaner or anything like that. It's simply unfixable. So that will have to be revamped, recovered, reclothed, cushions included. They'll obviously just get it cleaned up as best they can using the hoover there, as you can see. Yeah, it actually looks like it is sort of some form of sort of dust. Yeah. It doesn't look like liquid, yeah. so... Um, but, but ob yeah. obviously they can't be working on it, dismantling the with table... The noise with the noise next door, yes. With, yeah, me, with yeah. the other table in, in play, which is um, going to be in, what, 18, 17 minutes from now. And obviously this is affecting not only everyone watching at home, <coughs> which of course we're all fans here, but you, you've paid good money, you're sat in the crowd, you're going to be devastated about yeah, this. Yeah, it's not good. It's, 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 you know, obviously um, they're going to do their best they can and before the play starts on the other table, but they must move that divided wall and let the fans this side watch the match because, um, you know, these people have, like, come to see and feel the crucible atmosphere, that's the only way they're going to get it now. It looks like it's coming off, though. Yeah, that's so. a good point Jimmy makes, Radzi. You know, that, that they'll get this cleaned up as best they can. We've got the best table fitters in the business. They'll be on that at the close of play on table two tonight. And, um, yeah, they've got rolls of cloth behind the scenes here and got the best table fitters, as I say, so all will be good to go as of tomorrow morning. It, it might be worth just reiterating that point. We do have a free session on Thursday morning, potentially. The only thing with that is I think the session that is scheduled starts at 1 o'clock, so maybe that could be, um, you know, tweaked around um, in some way. That's possible. Just a technical question, Al. Mm. In terms of if the cloth obviously does get changed, so mm -hmm. tomorrow we essentially have a, a new table. Mm -hmm. That's what, again going to affect things. People talk about th the conditions. So we've almost got a 50-50 chance as to what table you're playing on, and it could be two very different tables. Hi, I'm Ronnie O'Sullivan, and welcome to Eurosport Snooker on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Snooker.